All right, I am going to give an overview of the syllabus, the modules, pages, assignments, discussions, and alerts. Basically, I'm going to give you an overview of how to get started in the class. All right, so I'm going to bring up the syllabus. Okay, so uh, this is ITC 172, Python Web Programming. And it's going to be online this quarter because of all the weirdnesses that we're experiencing. Uh, there is a blog, um, although the main blog for this is a little bit different than that one. There's a link to GitHub and there's a link to YouTube. All of those, the GitHub is a link to my files on GitHub and the YouTube is a link to the videos, but they're also all linked inside of the module. So we'll look at that in a moment. Um, so I'm just going down here. My office doesn't really matter. When you need me, I won't be on campus. Uh, so what you want to do is email me and I will answer as soon as you can, as I can. And if we need to, we can arrange some kind of online meeting. So email would be the best way. Just email me and I watch my emails every day and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. The other thing, if you're looking for help, uh, and we'll talk about this a bit more later, is go to the discussions in Canvas and look at, uh, post your question and see if others can help answer it. I think between the discussions and the emails, we should be able to get you the help that you need. Um, this is a class in Python, you know, where we're going to um, basically create interactive data-driven web pages. We're going to connect to a database. We're going to read and update data. We're going to explain and uh, implement some secure coding techniques, develop and implement tests for application requirements, we're going to troubleshoot. There'll be a lot of troubleshooting problems and try to trap errors. Uh, we'll look at various programming tools and we'll, it says work effectively in groups. Groups will be a little optional. So for the assignments, this is under methods of instruction. I have a step-by-step -step tutorial for an example, Django application. It's in a blog. The assignment follows that tutorial fairly closely, though it has a different subject matter and model. I've also provided links and videos to other tutorials and examples. And for the most part, just proceed at your own pace. Don't worry too much about the due dates. I don't take off for late assignments. When you have questions, email or post them into the Canvas discussion. We don't have a textbook, but there are a lot of resources and uh, some of them are listed under pages in Canvas. So all the assignments are in Canvas. Uh, each assignment is worth 10 points, and they each have a rubric. Um, if, you, if I take points off, I'll always tell you why. And you can always redo the assignment to get the um, points back. Uh, there's also a final project, which is basically a um, do-over of everything that we did in the assignments, but with a slightly different topic. and. Uh, it should be a group assignment, but if you want to do it solo, you can. So we're going to talk about the most of these things are things that will be covered in the class. I'll talk a little bit in this video about the overview of web technologies and Python. Um, so here are the grading lists. Again, assignments are given a point value. Every assignment has a rubric. Um, you can always correct the problem and get full points. There are also a midterm and a final, as well as the project. Uh, the midterm and the final are multi-choice, multi uh, three tries through. The point is just to reinforce some of the concepts. They are not difficult and they shouldn't hurt your grade. They're nothing to panic over. Down below, there's a lot of general information about the schools, and then you'll see the assignments down here. All right, so this is the syllabus. And if you have questions about it, you could email me. Um, I'm going to look next at the modules. OK, 
Okay, so modules, I have an overview, and there's a lot of different things in the overview. One of them we'll look at today is uh, the Django overview, but not right this second. There's a list of Django projects. Um, actually, I'm not sure what that is. Let's take a look at it. Oh, it's the way a Django project looks, the, the layout of it. Uh, there's some Python concepts. There's some notes on troubleshooting. There's also a YouTube video for the installation of the first view. And then there's a better walkthrough. It's better because it provides you with a more secure way to do it. If you want to do the one from the first, that's fine. Uh, this one walks you through it uh, and allows you to do things like not store your passwords in GitHub and etc. A um, couple of things. There's also a GitHub tutorial somewhere. Blog, in, blog about using GitHub. I would prefer all of your assignments are turned in on GitHub and that you just link them to me. Uh, give me the link uh, to your GitHub entry. All right, and this tells you a little bit about using GitHub. Also, this better walkthrough uh, from setup to first video also shows you a better way to set up GitHub. There's also a discussion of how to do it in the um, discussions, I believe. So the first assignments have to do with setup and configuration. And then there's creating and implementing models. And then we're URLs and templates, testing, building some forms. We're going to authenticate those forms and do a little bit more testing. And then there's the final project. Okay, so those are like all of the assignments. Let's look at the first assignment. Um, assignment one, setup. Okay, come on. There we go. Now, one of the things that I wanted to show you about this is that it has a link to the blog part that's relevant. So if I click on that, it takes me to the blog. And this talks about installation and setup. And it goes through and gives you the commands and the, the basic steps that you need to set it up. And then it talks about opening the project in VS Code. And it also has a, a link here for how to set up your GitHub repository. I would take that link and I would follow this because it actually will make your life a lot easier in terms of the GitHub. Okay, and then I'm going to go back and we'll look at the rest of that. One other thing I want to mention while I'm here and thinking about it is that there, the software that you will need. So we will need Postgres SQL with um, PG admin. And that's a free download. It'll download on anything. Um, if you've already got it downloaded for some other class, then you're fine. And, uh, you know, you feel free to, um, to use the installation you've got. If not, you can get it. As I said, it's uh, much, it's really easy to download, really easy to install. Uh, if you really want to, you could probably use MySQL instead. Uh, a few things would change, particularly in the initial setup. Once the initial setup had been done, though, there really wouldn't be any difference if you used MySQL than if you used Postgres. Postgres, I think, is a better database, but you can do uh, as you wish. As I said, I would Postgres, is, I think, is the better database. The other thing that we need is we need Python, and it needs to be at least 3.6. Uh, you'll get errors if you try to install Django and set up without Python 3.6. Um, the other third thing I'm using is uh, Visual Studio. All right. Well, it's Visual Studio Code. It's not the full Visual Studio. It's a lightweight Visual Studio from Microsoft. It'll run on anything. So it is 
it is, I think, one of the ideal environments to do this in. You do not have to use Visual Studio Code if you don't want. Um, you could use Idle, you could use uh, Python Charm, PyCharm. You can use whatever you want, but I think Visual Studio Code is a really good option. And then, as I said, the other thing that we'll need is just GitHub. You'll need a GitHub account. They're free, and you can get them as long as you have most of them as um, a public. They're free to use, and you can have as many as you want. And if you give me a link to the GitHub, which is in the first videos, uh, that's all you need to do to turn in for each assignment. Turn it in for each one, even though, I mean, return in the link for each assignment just to make sure that I check it. All right. I'm not sure how clear all of that is, but let's go back to the syllabus. As I said, every assignment, let's look at assignment two just to show. Every assignment should have a link. Uh, if not there, then in the module. I might add the link to that. So after setup, there's config, and there's the blog entry for initial setup. I think that config is the same blog entry as these. These are both the same blog entry. Assignment 4 has the that and then the models. This is the blog entry for mod. Here's the blog entry for models. This is a page on models. Right? So it has some more information there. I did want to mention that in page I have some pages here. I have a base HTML file, basic commands, Django projects, which is the overview, a thing on GitHub, initial setup, uh, models, overview of what we had done so far some time ago, some Python concepts, a thing on testing, a thing on troubleshooting, and let me show tutor tutorials and references. These are some useful tutorials. Uh, the overview of Django, Django Girls tutorial, Django Documents tutorial, the Django book, Django project. These are things that I have made, tech reviews, tech review 2, reading apps, service pro, um, this is, uh, the tech, the tech review block project, which is related to all the others. And this is a, uh, video that shows what the projects will look like when they're done to give you just some idea of what the overall look of them is. Okay. So we've looked a little bit at modules probably the modules is where you want to spend most of your time i've tried to clean them up uh, so that there is not as many things in the module and it, the modules are fairly focused so that it'll be easier to follow them and i talked about pages another thing i want to talk about is discussions discussions is a place where uh, you can put your questions. I've left the discussions up from the last two quarters. Um, some of them don't apply to us, so like changing Ubuntu screen resolution, I might actually delete that one. Uh, but installing Django via VS Code, a tutorial, basic command line commands, video for the first setup for the first view, which I posted, managing database and passwords, in settings stop pi you know Aaron's little sheet so you can post things in here and hopefully there will be uh, people that reply and help you with that as well as of course emailing me when you have problems okay um, let's go back to modules so I think I've covered most of what I want to do, but I do want to do uh, this Django overview. So I'm going to uh, link to the external site and I'm going to click on present. So we're going to talk a little bit about the Django overview and the Python based web programming. So. Django is a Python-based web development framework. 
has all the advantages of Python, simplicity, abstraction, and minimal coding. It uses a modified model view controller pattern. Um, Django views are more like controllers in the traditional MVC, and templates are acting like what would be views. Uh, there's also a layer of URLs directing the program to the views. We'll look at those. It's a virtual environment. Um, it uses VNV. It's part of the standard Python library, and it's used to run projects and apps. Um, when a project is ready to deploy, it can be linked to Apache web server, but you actually have to link the VNV to the Apache web server. Uh, the virtual environment has to be there. Um, the project is the basic container for Django applications, and uh, it has a folder that contains settings.py where you can configure the database and register the apps. It also contains a URLs pie, which directs the project to the views of the project. And any project can have several apps. Um, ours are only going to have one, but they could have many apps. Um, I'm not sure why that's a dot dot pi. It's a w, should be a WSG pi. I, I might fix that. Each product can contain one or more apps. That's what I said. Apps are uh, where most of the coding takes place. Um, they contain the views.py file and the models.py file. And the app is also where we'll place our forms and templates. So here's sort of a structure of it. You have an outer folder. You have the VNV. Actually, the VNV might be in the outer. You have the project name folder. You have a project name. And then you have uh, app name and all the files from that. It's a little bit confusing. The hardest part initially will be managing working through all the different folders and files that you need to manage. So a view is where most of the coding gets done. Um, so as I said, in most model view controls environments, the view would be controlled, called a controller. Here's a sample of a view called get products. It's a function, as you see. It processes a request. Uh, the request is the browser request for a page. Uh, product list is a variable and in product.objectsAll. So product is a model which we will have built and we're asking for all of the objects. On the return we're rendering our request from the page. We're telling it where to find our response. Tech app products HTML. So this is the path to our HTML page. And this is the um, context that we're passing that we can use in our code to access the objects in the product list. All right, all that's probably very confusing, but that's okay. You'll get do it a few times and you get used to it. URLs are basically provide a path to where to find the view for the project. The pro the view is in the path. Um, the view is in the app, and the request goes through the project, through the URLs, to the app. So it guides it to the view where it finds the, um, the, the view that it's going to use, and uh, we give it an alias name. I don't know if you can hear that, but my neighbors seem to be using their weed eaters. Models uh, consist of classes that map to database tables. You can create the classes and migrate them to the database, which is what we'll do. Or you can inspect a database and create a model classes from an existing database. The models control relationships and will generate linking tables to resolve many to many relationships. Uh, the model also somewhat mysteriously controls access to the database, including select, insert, and update functions. Templates are HTML files, all right, and they go in a templates folder. And uh, inside the templates folder, there's usually a subdirectory with the app name. Okay, and they all read from a base HTML file, which is sort of the outer layer of 
the, the structure of the HTML file. The other HTML is just put into an insert into a placeholder. So I hope that noise isn't causing too much trouble here. Um, Django has built in testing and it's a good idea to build tests as you build the application. Testing is usually a key component and we'll do a little bit of testing. There's an example here. So the f program flow is it reads the settings, it goes to the program URLs, it's redirected to the app URLs, and then it's redirected to a view. The, at the view, it has to decide, is it reading from the model and the database, or is it going to a form? All right, so it goes one of these ways, either to the form and the templates, or it goes from the model to the templates. All right, so the, and the templates being the HTML page. So that's all of this introductory thing. I'll do an escape. All right, don't know how good all of that is. It feels a little vague to me. Um, let's go back home. All right, so where I would advise you to start is look at the modules, maybe review that, look at the video for installing it and the blog entries on GitHub and etc. Look through the stuff in the the preliminaries here and then um, start setting it up if you can. And again the first things you might have to do are to install if you haven't got them already you may need to install Postgres you may need to install Python. If you install Python on Windows, make sure that you include the path. It's in the install package. For Visual Studio Code, again, it's easy to install. And in GitHub. And the videos and things will show you a little bit more about how to set these up and do those. All right, send me any questions that you have, and uh, hopefully we'll get started. All right, I'm going to stop this video.